Good afternoon, welcome to the shed. Today I'm going to be making a start on restoring this plane. This is a Stanley number no. seven. Uh, it's one of the ones that I picked up recently uh, in my sort of uh, boot sale or uh, flea market haul. It's a bit of a special one for me because it's the first plane I sort of uh, stumbled across uh, that made me realize that people collect uh, these things. I was at the market and I sort of saw it there and said, oh, what's that? It said, oh, it's Stanley number seven. Uh, I didn't buy it. He, uh, he was asking 65 quid, which was probably all right. Um, but the reason I didn't buy it was because it didn't have the correct blade uh, and a lot of the bits had been swapped. So it seems that that's quite common for that to happen. In fact, this one's had some swaps as well. So, um, yeah, so this is a USA made, but I've had it apart and it has got a record blade. There's also something else that I'll show you when we get to that point. So I'm going to do this over the next couple of days because uh, I haven't got time to sort of do it all in one go. Uh, but I couldn't wait to get started so I thought I'd do, do the intro at least so I can uh, do it as I go along. So let's get over to the bench and uh, have a look and see what we've got. So first of all a bit about this plane. Obviously it's really long. This one is 22 and a half inches long. They do vary a bit apparently depending on which casting they've come from uh, or which mould. Uh, yeah, so number seven, it's what's called a jointer plane. So it's basically for putting straight edges on long bits of wood that you want to join together. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it's one that I want in the collection. This one is in pretty good shape. Most of the Japanning is all intact. Can't see any bits missing. Um, yeah, it seems to have been pretty well looked after. A few paint splashes on the handles, which I think are original. Um, as I say, there's something about the blade which I need to show you. Let's do that. I picked up three of these at the uh, market, uh, and I wasn't sure which one to keep. I knew I wanted a USA one because they're a bit just worth a bit more money. Um, but one of the ones that I, I got had a it had a Stanley blade, uh, but it was basically down to nothing. So I didn't want that one, so I went with this one. So this has got a standard lever cap, but it has what's called a record stay set cap iron, uh, sorry, chip breaker. And that is two parts. It means you can sharpen the blade without having to reset your chip breaker. That's the idea. It also gives more strength across the front of the blade um, because you're clamping on a smaller piece of metal rather than on the arch of, of the standard chip breaker. That's the theory. This was patented in the 30s. This plane itself, I think, dates from 19... 09? I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that. I think it was 1909. Yeah, so it's a bit different and I wasn't sure whether to keep go with that or not, but then I thought, well, actually, yeah, let's have something a bit different. I think these blades are tungsten steel as well, all the way through. So, uh, you know, the record blades are really good. There's nothing wrong with those at all. Sheffield steel, obviously. Let's have a little look at that. Can't really see much, but it looks in pretty good condition. It's actually pretty sharp as well. Plenty of meat are left on that one. When we clean it up, we'll we'll be able to tell whether it is a Stanley or a record. I thought I checked, but obviously I didn't. Okay, that's that bit. There's our stay set chip breaker. Um, and then we can take the frog off. We can have a look at the ribs in there and that will tell us the age. This one doesn't have the raised lips at the ends, which is another one of the clues to the age. Okay, so yeah, this has got the um, frog adjuster screw, which I think was 1920s. No, 1910, I think, so it must be after that. Uh, and then it's got this raised rib. Can't remember what the age was on that. Uh, but I'll go and check that in a moment and I will be back to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good old clean after I've dismantled it. Okay, that's the adjuster, take the handle off. Um, 
I'm going to do something slightly different on the cleaning of the metal sides. Generally I don't touch the bottom, the sole, too much because I don't feel like I can make it better. I think I'm more likely to make it worse. As long as it's straight and got rid of any nicks, I think that's that's fairly good. I think it's uh, going a bit over, top, over the top just to flatten it completely. I'm sure some of you will disagree. Okay, that's the handle. Look, so we've got some paint splashes on that, but generally that's in really good nick. So we can clean that with a bit of wire wool and some meths and that'll clean. Same with the front knob. I don't think this one's had too much action, but uh, I guess it must have done because it's had the blade changed. So that suggests that uh, it's had at least one blade's worth of work. That's had a wash. Got rid of all the old sawdust. It's in very good original condition. Can't complain about that. A few spots of paint. Most of the japanning is in tacked. Looks like either a bit of glue or even possibly a flaw in the casting at the end there. I'm not sure about that. Could be the casting I think. Um, yeah so I did look it look it up. It's a type 15. It's a number seven type 15. That's the sort of age group. 1931 to 32. Don't know where I got me 1909 from. Probably one of the other ones. Um, yeah so basically that's what it is. Maybe the uh, stay set stay set was an option for um, these at the time. I don't know. Anyway, it's in good nick. It's in good condition. Uh, just basically needs the metal cleaning. I mean, really, I could sharpen the blade and that would work. But we're going to go a bit further than that, as it's for my collection. I'm going to come out. Let's try anchoring it. Okay, that's got it. Try my best not to damage the screws. There you go, that's all the bits. It's in good nick. Um, I think the guy that uh, had these stored them. I think he put some grease on them because they all they all seem to be coated. So there's why well, there's no no decent no rust on them, which is good. Looks pretty straight. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. Very happy with that. Going to be my pride and joy.
okay, we are ready to uh, put this back together. Uh, the only thing I'm not that happy about is the lever cap, which seems to have some sort of staining to it. Or I didn't want to go too far in case it damaged the metal, but uh, yeah, it's got a bit of discoloration on it. But I think we'll leave it as it is. Didn't want to take the nickel plating off the top there. Uh, the handles, I just cleaned the paint off and oiled them. They look lovely. Really happy with the way that is. The blade is actually a Stanley, which I don't know. I think I really would have rather it was a record to go with the stay set. Um, I have sharpened that. That took me a bit of bit of trouble, but I got there in the end. Really, really done a nice job of that one now. Okay, let's put it back together. All the other bits I've cleaned up using the wire brush or uh, the abrasive wheel as necessary. So we can start by putting in the frog adjuster screw. We will need that. And the adjuster that goes on the back of the frog or the little two pronged piece that fits into the adjuster. Rusty two in one oil ready. Okay, right. Just to keep everything nice and free. So, frog goes on first. There is a little bit of damage on the front of the frog, I noticed, but I don't think it's going to affect how the plane works. I oiled the body with a bit of olive oil. Very continental, but it just gives it a bit of a shine without making it smelly. Okay, that's the frog adjusted, or near enough. Uh, now's the best time to put the handle on, before I've got other, all the other stuff in the way. Polished up the brass bits on the wire wheel, they always come up nice. Front screw for the knob, handle, tote, whatever it's called. This is the one I always block myself access to. So this needs to go on before everything else gets tightened down. That's quite stiff, that, that needs a drop of oil. Okay, uh, front knob. Let's try putting this blade together, not really done one of these before so oh sorry I'll do that let's put my lock my frog down yeah I've also forgotten to put a brass wheel on haven't I hopefully I can do that without to take it apart again. It wouldn't be the first time if I don't if I can't. Yeah that drops in there a treat.
may need a bit of further adjustment. Okay, right, just the blade now. It is a bit of a disadvantage that that piece comes loose, so you're inclined to lose it if you're not careful. But I guess you don't take it apart that often. That's the idea of it. See what I mean? I wanted to give it a try though. See how it gets on. Okay, there she is. I think that's kind of like the uh, the battleship of the set. So the number six is the cruiser. This is the battleship. And then the uh, number eight, which is up next, is the aircraft carrier. In my imagination, at least. Okay, let's give her a try. This hasn't been used or set up at all. It's going to need a little bit of blade, I think, but no, that's not even touching at all. Nice long piece of wood I've got. Yeah, those are pretty hefty shavings. We'll back those off a bit. A shed.
that is lovely. Not sure how square that is because it's quite hard to keep it. Actually, that's pretty good really for me. It's quite hard to keep it going on a long bit of wood. It's better just to drop your finger down the side and just... long shaving there is a bit of a knot in the middle of this wood but that's good okay really happy with that two out of three we've got now just the number eight to do and I'll have the proper set okay thanks very much for watching um, very happy with that turned out really nice it's a beautiful piece of machinery isn't it look at that nice way to do it just to sort of uh, a sympathetic restore I call it. So it works, it's clean, it's tidy, it's beautiful. Very very happy. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Next up it will be the number eight. Um, I'll link to the number six which I did a week or so ago here uh, and I'll also put a link to my eBay store down below just in case I've got any of these for sale. At the time of filming I've got two up for sale on eBay of the number sevens. They don't come up very often but by the time this video comes out they'll be gone. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, okay, thanks very much for watching. See you soon.